Oh, very good, Paula. Our nuptial hour draws on apace. Four happy days brings in another moon. Oh, me thinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires like a step dame or a dowager, long weathering out a young man's revenue. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night, and four nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow, be bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnities. Go, Philostrate! Spirit of the Athenian youth to merit, awake the pert and nimble spirit of mirth. Turn melancholy forth into funeral. The pale companion is not for our pomp. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword, and I won thy love, doing thee injuries. But I will wed thee in another key, with triumph, with pomp, and with reveling. Happy be Theseus, all noble room. Thanks, good Aegis. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I, with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius. My noble lord, this man has my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander, and my gracious duke, this man has bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at a window sun, with fading voice, verses of fading love, and stolen the impression of our imagination with bracelets of thy hair, rings, gourds, conceit, snacks, trifles, nosegays, sweetmeats, all messengers of strong prevailment in unhardened youth. With cunning hath thou filched my daughter's heart, and stolen her obedience, which should be to me, to stubborn harshness. And so, your gracious duke, be it so she will not hear before your grace consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens. As she is mine, may I, so may I dispose of her, which should be either to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law, immediately provided in that case. <laughs> What say you, Maria? Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself he is, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held worthier. I would my father look at it with my eyes. Rather with, with, rather your eyes, with his judgment must look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold, nor how it may concern my modesty in such a presence here to plead my thoughts. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, Hermia, question your desires. Know your youth. Examine well your blood. Whether uh, if you yield not to your father's will, you can endure the livery of a nun. For I in a shady cloister mew. To live a barren sister all your life, chanting fate hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. Thrice blessed they, the master sow their blood, but earthly or happy is the rose distilled, and that which withers on the virgin thorn grows, lives, and dies in single blessedness. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will yield my virgin patent up unto his lordship whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, the sealing day, which was my, my love and me for everlasting bond of fellowship, upon that day, prepare to die, or uh, for disobedience to your father's will, or to marry Demetrius, as your father would, or a vow of sing upon Diana's altar, protest for our austerity and single life. Relent, sweet Hermia. Lysander, yield thy crazed title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Ah, scornful <laughs> Lysander. True, he hath my love, and everything that is mine I do entreat to Demetrius. I am. And she is mine, and I give her to Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he. As well possessed, my love is more than his, my fortunes in every way as fairly ranked, if not with vantage, as Demetrius. And what's more than all these boasts can be, I'm beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should I not then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head, made love to Neter's daughter Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. 
I must confess, I have heard as much and what Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof, but being full of self-affairs, my mind did lose it. Demetrius and Aegeus, you should go along. I have some private schooling for yourself. As for you, fair Hermia, look you, uh, arm your, look you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will. Or else, the law of Athens yields you up, by which means we may not extenuate to death or to vow a single life. Come on, come on, Paul. But cheer, my love. Demetrius and Aegeus, we will go along. I have some business, uh, we have some business against uh, our nuptial that concerns you. And I must concern, uh, uh, and I believe that we have some business that really concerns you. <laughs> <laughs>